girls were in a tight deadlock for, for a possible bronze medal, and we had elected not to show the Soviet girls on the uneven bars because the other girls were working other events. And as they warmed up, I remember looking across you as you were taking a bite of the worst we loved so much. And here was this little skinny girl doing this unbelievable thing on the high bar, which you then perceived as something important, and it became... I often wondered, what would happen had I not looked up and seen the, uh, the warm-up? You will not be surprised to know that her name was Olga Korbin. She was a last-minute substitute on the Soviet team, replacing Nina Dronova, who had broken her wrist. Olga wasn't even listed in the Russian team biography. But after Gordon spotted that practice move, we began to comment. Now watch this. Watch this. Back up! I'll be right to the other bar. Has that been done before by Never. a girl? Never. Not by any human that I know of. Look at that. And she's second best? I don't believe it. This, then, is a historic performance you're watching right now in gymnastics. She's, uh, Kathy Rigby's size. Oh, my... Wow! By morning, she was a household name around the world. The next night, we moved to the individual all-around finals. After the vault, Olga had a chance at the gold. And now came her specialty, the unevens. It was a disaster. Oh, look Bobble, at that. Right, on the right off the bat. Oh, that's a shame. And now she's in such a tight fight for the championship. Here we go. There's a back, somebody to the catch. Wow. Even with her mistake, she's still revolutionizing gymnastics. Point out specifics when you can. I sure will. She just dropped. There's oh. another mistake. Poor kid. You know, this is what we talk about seasoning. Oh, she just lost it all. Lost her composure. Jim, this is At age 17. The small, vulnerable figure left the floor defeated. The confidence was gone. As Coach Paulina Ashtakova tried to console her, the tears began to flow. Triumph had turned to tears, childish joy to teenage sadness, and no one feels deeper sadness than a teenager. Still one more night remained, the individual event finals. The world held its breath as Olga returned to the bar. She was good. Perfection had returned. The confidence flowed. At age 17 and 83 and a half pounds, that is some courage and some poise. Remember the things that happened as we showed you on Monday night, victory. Last night, defeat. And tonight, it may well be victory again. She needs 9.85 to take the lead. And she... She didn't get it. 9.80 ties her for the lead right now with Erica Dukol, so she can still get a gold medal. But that tie for the lead was not to last. The final performer on the uneven bars was Karen Jans, an East German medical student. Older, more experienced, more mature, Jans performed brilliantly. It was she who won the gold medal. What had seemed so easy to Olga on Monday now was more and more elusive. But the crowd was still with her. As they marched to the balance beam, it was Olga the crowd was cheering, and she knew it. Did that demonstration on her behalf intimidate the judges as she performed on the beam a few minutes later? Well, certainly the crowd inspired Olga. This, at last, was the performance that would do it for her, would win the gold medal that everyone in the world wanted her to have. And now, only the floor exercise was left. Would you have bet against her for another gold medal that night? As I said, there's one more gymnast to go. You might have guessed. It's Olga Corbett. She has a gold now. And she has a silver. To win another gold, she needs a performance of 9.90. That's what she got on the balance beam. What an exciting little gal. Watch how she beams and plays to the crowd. Isn't that something? 
interesting. You can tell she just feels like nothing can stop her now. Huh? <laughs> Gee, I hope she gets it. Had a couple of little arm breaks, but so did her teammate. Oh, yeah. In the end, there seemed a destiny to the saga of Olga Corbett. The winning mark on the floor exercise surprised no one, although her teammate Tamara Lazakovic had turned in a marvelous performance. For Lazakovic, it was a bitter defeat. The silver medal brought only tears for her. They were unnoticed by the idolaters of Olga. She was the toast of Munich, an instant celebrity if ever there was one. Her other teammate, Ludmila Turistova, had won the all-around title and was unquestionably the best in the world. But Olga was destiny's darling. Her impact on gymnastics would change the sport forever. And this girl, Nadia Comaneci at age 14 in Montreal. Kathy Rigby, by 1976, was a commentator, working with Chris Schenkel. Beautiful rhythm, right to a handstand. Oh, look at that amplitude. Ooh. She is really moving well. Another handstand. Look at that, right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine. Beautiful, and the crowd loves it. Of Romania. Oh, and now look at her play with her. Uh, over 18,000 uh, delighted with her performance. A perfect dance. The first time. The first time I have ever seen that in a Olympic competition. A perfect dance. Oh, now they begin to stand. Here's the forum. This is the first dance competition. Oh, this is the first dance competition. Such a performance. Look at how excited she is. I've never seen such a performance. In the nights to come, the thousands of people jamming the forum would have much to cheer about. Before the week was over, Nadia would receive seven perfect marks of ten, a feat unprecedented in the sport. There was no question now that women's gymnastics had taken a dramatic turn. The elegance and maturity of Chaslovska and Turistjeva had given way to the athleticism and agility and the courage of girls in their early teens. Olga had bridged the gap from woman to girl child in the sport, and now Nadia had become the embodiment of youth. Some wondered if anyone could be perfect at 14, but the judges thought Nadia was, and the crowds agreed. And what of Olga? She was there in Montreal, but four years had made such a difference. At age 21, dark circles had replaced the blithe spirit in her eyes. She was still good, but not great. Uncertainty had won over confidence. The world that had opened to her in Munich was now receding into the past. In 1968, Vera Cheslowska won her gold medal with a simple piped front handspring, really an intermediate vault. Ten years later, at the World Championships, Rhonda Swant was using a layout Sukahara, which is really a cartwheel onto the horse with a layout one and a half back off. Quite a contrast in a decade. In the 68 Olympics, Cheslowska's bar routine included simple fundamental moves from bar to bar. Her big trick was this, back straddle into a full pirouette. Probably wouldn't even be a compulsory routine in this day. This dismount, simple heck dog. Again, contrasting Rhonda's bar routine a decade later, she shows great similarity to men's horizontal bar. A variety of circles, right to handstands. And after this, she'll even show you a giant swing. Right here. And caps it off with Komenich's dismount. Ludmila Cherishtyeva, one of the all-time great women gymnasts. Her 1972 Olympic floor exercise routine was based on a firm foundation of balletic movements. 
and yet as you watch the routine, it's distinctive in that there's almost a total absence of acrobatic movements. She does an aerial layover, but her big trick was just a simple back somersault. Yet as you watch her, you're impressed with the fineness, the elegance of the movement. Now, by contrast, in 1978, world champion Elena Mukina opens with a full-twisting double back, a move that was previously confined to the trampoline. Later in her routine, she shows more great acrobatic moves, but you notice that the movement isn't as smooth, it isn't as elegant, it isn't the kind of movement you'd see in a ballet theater for sure. Now, a tumbling move. And then she finishes her routine, amazingly enough, by another double back somersault. Tremendous difficulty. Quite a contrast in just 10 years. And then the balance beam, 1916 Olympic Games, Czechoslovakian Anna Laskova. Her work is going to be very slow, very deliberate, and again, an absence of acrobatic moves. In fact, maybe the most difficult part of her routine will be a handstand lower to a forward roll right here. An age group move appropriate for today's eight or nine year old performers. And our contrast is in the American Cup 1979, Tracy Talavera. Watch her acrobatic moves. There's a back walkover. She's so much more aggressive, she almost attacks her moves. Her routine, the foundation, I would think is more acrobatic, less balletic, certainly riskier, as in that back somersault. Then she gets ready for a dismount, it'll be two back handsprings into a double twister. And remember, Tracy is only 12 years old. Here in New Jersey is a new, well-equipped gym. Not all our facilities are this glamorous. We took our camera to the Parkettes Gymnasium in Allentown, Pennsylvania.